This conference will now be recorded. So, <clears throat> so today we'll be discussing combination of keen lenses and combination of see this combination of lenses are being used in many instruments like camera microscope telescope etc so combination means maybe two or more than that okay so two or more than two lenses are kept in contact or separated by a distance okay so combination of lenses are used see we'll see the purposes first what do what do we do with this combination of lenses we have learned already what is power power is actually reciprocal of focal length and if you want to know philosophically suppose a convex lens how much like strongly it is converging okay if if a lens has greater greater power it will converge the lens uh, converge the ray parallel ray very near to its optical center right so these are the things we have already learned so see we have some purpose to purposes to use this combination of lenses first of all a single lens cannot sometimes cannot give you proper magnification so see these are few purposes to magnify images as i said sometime we may need <coughs> magnification very very high to see far off object or very tiny object so you can see uh, in case of microscope microscope we see very very tiny objects so for that case you need a very good microscope which has very very large magnification okay very large magnification so that you can see a very tiny or point object also as a big big object and then in the laboratory if you use a lens a, a, a microscope of higher magnification will give you much more details of the experiment okay so to magnify an image we use combination of lenses because a single lens have a single lens has limited power and limited magnification sometimes to increase the sharpness of the final image to increase the final uh, sharpness of images the combination of lenses are used because in case of a single lens there may be we'll, we'll just see when we discuss optical instruments telescope or microscope we'll see we'll talk about few defects like defects those are called aberration aberration so aberration of the lenses are actually nullified or minimized minimized by combination of combination of lenses some sometime 
there may be many other process but combination of lens if you use by using that aberration or defects are minimized somewhat so that the image will be sharp i hope in this age uh, in the era of selfie you might know what is sharp image and what is blur image those things okay i hope you know this and sometime to erect final image see in case of a single image sometime the real image will be formed inverted so you have to make it erect so then you can use another lens to erect it okay so that's why combination of lens lenses can be used and sometimes to increase the field of view suppose you want to see a big field of view but with a single lens you may not be able to focus this much field of view so in that case you have to use a big lens or small lens or combination of big and small lenses okay so these are few purposes to use combination of lenses now we'll see combination of lens when we see there are actually two types of combination as i said one is if you use two thin lenses and keep them in contact this is one kind of combination another kind of combination is if you keep two thin lenses by like with the separation of some length d suppose okay this also can be called as combination okay we'll see we'll develop or derive some equations and we'll see how the power in combination like see the see individual lenses they have their own power and how they are getting com combined in a combination of lens and how magnificence magnification is getting combined in a combina combination okay so those are the things we will be learning today and these are actually important so but i am not taking to in today's class thick lens but if there is a problem sometime like numerical problem is being asked in some question then we will discuss the thick lens also okay so let us see this is the figure figure one suppose and this is combination of two thin lenses lenses a and b okay so let us suppose a has focal length f1 and b has focal length f2 okay both are thin lenses and see when we use a combination so in the image formation in the image formation both will act okay when you use this as a combination like uh, two lenses in contact so this will act as a single lens and you will see the combined effect of both combined effect of both but for the purpose of our understanding and finding out the final position of the image what we can do is we can just consider separately and then combine the effect separate effect and then get the final position of the image i hope you have understood i'll just repeat this sentence see when we use two lenses like this okay this will act as a as an equivalent equivalent single lens okay equivalent lens means a single lens which can produce the same effect as this two the actually two do together okay so equivalent 
lens means a lens which can do the same job as the combination of these two do, do actually okay the combination of these two does okay so that is equivalent lens equivalent lens so we'll just see <clears throat> the final image if you just have a light coming from a point object O from here and then refracted through both and you will see the final image over here so this is what we see actually but for our understanding purpose we can do one thing we can think that suppose the refraction happens first by the like through the lens a so we are just considering light from point object first so light from point object so that that light is actually suppose oa eh? okay so consider oa light rays okay oa ray light ray i will write oa ray from point object o first refract refracts through a and what it does it produces an image image that is i1 okay this producing an image i1 so this image is real image so this is i is actually real image i1 real image i hope you are understanding what i'm trying to say i'm just considering that a ray oa which is coming from point object o is first getting refracted by the first lens a <clears throat> and after refraction it is creating an, an image at i1 so this i1 is the image and let us suppose the image distance is this one v1 okay image distance this is image distance image distance is v1 one more assumption we must make that this point p this is the optical center p is the optical center and in this case you should consider that the optical center of both both the lenses should coincide at a single point that is p over here and whenever we measure a distance we will dis measure from the common center of curvature of these two lenses that is p here we are just considering that the thin lenses because these are very very thin lenses so they are upon keep upon contact they are they are center of curvature will coincide on each other okay no need to think that you have to measure distance from somewhere here we are just considering that suppose this one p1 and this is p2 or p a p b the center of the lenses they coincide at a point p so that is what i am just doing here so both the center of curvature coincide at a point so that is p now if you want to cal calculate any distance for this combination of lens you have to take the distance or measure the distance from p so that is what we have done here so what you have considered we have considered that light which is coming from o is getting refracted 
by the fast lens A and it is creating an image, real image I1 on the principal axis and that is V1 away from the common center of curvature. Okay. Now look what will happen. This image I1 will act as I1 will act as a virtual virtual object virtual object for lens B. Okay. So this I1 the image produced by the first lens will act as a virtual object for the second lens B. Okay. So after getting refracted, see if I think this is the object for the lens B, then after refraction of refraction after refraction final refraction by this second lens let us suppose the image is formed over here at i okay which has a which has the image distance v over here okay so now what i'll do i'll just write for see i'll just okay let me clean this so I have considered that focal lens are F1 and F2 for these two lenses. Now if I write for, see uh, we have learned already the lenses, lens equation or equation of thin lens. Of a thin lens we have already learned. <coughs> so what, what is that? That is 1 over image distance minus 1 over object distance that is equal to 1 over focal length. So if I write that for for lens A okay it is see it is refracting see it is creating an image over here I1 which has image distance 1 over V1 and object distance is 1 over U is equal to 1 over F1. Okay. The same equation, lens equation, if we write for lens B. So what I have to write, the final image is formed at V. So 1 by V minus 1 by, see this, you have to write 1 by V1. This is the virtual object which is see you have to write as V1 you should not write U again here because in the for the second lens object is I1 okay the real image created by the first lens and this will be equal to 1 over F2 focal length of the lens 2. So look I'll just write it here once again so for the first lens I have got 1 by V1 minus 1 by U that is equal to 1 by F1 and for the second lens I have got this is V 1 over V1 that is equal to 1 by F2 so yes F2 now if I add these two equations upon adding what we get See, if I add this two, this two will go away. You will get 1 by V over 1 by U is equal to 1 by F1 plus 1 by F2. So what you get is this one. I'll just write it. What you get is 1 over V is equal to 1 over F1 plus 1 over F2. So this is the relation between the focal length okay 1 over u also will be there 1 over v minus 1 over u that is equal to 1 over f1 plus 1 over f2 so this is the 
equation after combining the effect of both the lenses okay now if i consider if we would have a single equivalent lens equivalent lens of focal length f which can create image at the same v same position okay same position of the same object okay object so that will be equivalent lens so for that case what we will get see for the object that object position is one so one by v minus one by u is equal to one by f if i can write if this is equivalent i write if is the equivalent so or i can write f equivalent so one by f equivalent will be is equal to one by v minus one by u so i have taken a single lens single equivalent lens which can produce the image at the same distance an image of the same object also they will create that that particular equivalent lens will create a, an image of the same object at the same image distance okay so for that case what we can write see this if i if i compare these two equations suppose this is three sorry four equation fourth and this is three if you just compare these two equations then what you will get is see i'll write over here I'll, sorry i'll clean them so i have got one by p minus one by u is equal to one by f1 plus one by f2 and from the equivalent lens also i have got the same thing in the lab, left hand side and this is the thing okay so comparing these two we can write one by f equivalent is equal to one by f1 plus one by f2 okay so that means if you use more than one lens the equivalent focal length reciprocal of the equivalent focal length will be the sum of the reciprocal of the individual like uh, reciprocal of the wavelength of the individual lenses so if we use n lens n number of lenses <coughs> you can find out what is the lens like focal length of the combination so you can find out that by just doing 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4 dot dot you can go up to 1 over fn okay so if you have very large number of lenses in combination <coughs> thin lenses obviously in combination or in contact then this is actually in contact in case of contact so in case of that you can just take the reciprocal of the focal length and then add them up to get the total equivalent focal length or reciprocal of the equivalent focal length and we have learned in the last class we have learned that power is actually defined as 1 over f that means reciprocal of the focal length of any lens gives the power of the lens so i can write the equivalent power is equal to 1 by 1 over f1 means p1 1 over f2 means again p2 plus this is f p3 this is p4 like that it can go up to p n <clears throat> so you can see in the combination of the lens we get very very large power of of the com, uh, of the lens okay so combination will give very very large power because the equivalent the power of the equivalent lens is actually algebraic sum of all these powers of individual lenses okay algebraic sum of powers of the 
individual lenses. But in this case, look what we have got then. We have got two things for combination of lenses. One over f equivalent is equal to one over f one plus one over f two plus dot dot one over f n. How many number if you want, you can do with that. And this from here itself we can write power equivalent power is equal to the sum of the power of individual lenses. Okay. This is the thing we have got. Now you look in this case, you can use either convex or see you can use either all all convex or you can use you can use convex plus concave <coughs> so in the combination in this combination you can according to your necessity you can use both com convex and com concave together it is not necessary that you have to use either concave or convex you can use both type of lenses so in that case you know you have to take the focal length proper sign for convex you have to take positive sign in con for concave lenses you have to take negative sign of the focal length and according to that you know according to that the combination will have the value and the sign suppose this combination or equivalent equivalent focal length becomes negative then the combination as a whole will act as will act as a concave lens concave lens if suppose the focal length or the power power becomes positive reciprocal of the focal length or the power becomes positive see if the reciprocal or power is positive then a focal length also has to be positive obviously so this will act as acts as a convex lens okay so the combination also can act as either convex or concave depending on how many convex and how how many concave you have used and what are the focal length lengths of the individual lenses okay i have i think i i have told almost all the concept over here one more thing i is remaining that is the magnification we you are talking about magnification right magnification that is the main factor to increase the magnification only we are using mainly the combination of lenses so how to increase look how in combination how the magnification is increased suppose see i have n number of lenses i have magnification for each lenses m1 m2 m3 they are actually these are these are magnification produced by individual lenses okay so i have such n up to mn okay so in combination what will be the magnification that will be capital m see that will be product of all this magnification so product of all this magnification okay so magnification will be increased very very increase up to very high value okay so So this is the combination of thin lenses. Okay. Deepa, do you have any any query, any question, any doubt over here? Otherwise, I'll go to the next portion. Okay. Then I'll just go to the next portion. Okay, so look, I have told you that combination can be in two ways. You can keep two lenses in contact or you can 
take two thin lenses and keep them a little distance apart suppose d distance apart so as you can see from here so in this case also we can say according to our desire we can take one or two or uh, sorry two or more than two no, two more than two lenses and keep by uh, keep it a little distance away from each other and that combination will act as a single lens or single equivalent lens which will be actually giving the effect of both the lenses okay so in this case suppose i have two lenses here in the example so in this figure there are two lenses suppose one is l1 another one is l2 and see in this case one one important concept is you have to understand that the lenses lenses actually are having two focus or two foci we should say foci two foci one is first principal foci another one is second principal foci so first principal foci is this one and second principal foci is this one so the the focus which is near to the object is called first principal focus and the focus which is away from the object that is called second or towards the image okay or the near the image that is called second principal focus so this is called second principal focus okay second principal focus and this is actually first principal focus so this thing has to be understood here okay all right now see these two lenses i have supposed l1 and l2 they have first principal focus or principal focus f1 and f2 okay that focal length and these two lenses are placed coaxially at a distance d apart you can see that they have kept they, they have been kept coaxially and their optical centers are d distance apart from each other now look what happens suppose a parallel ray parallel in the sense ray which is parallel to principal axis suppose a ray oa oa that is getting refracted getting refracted by lens l1 first okay lens l1 first and see you can just follow this this after refraction you look the ray is coming like a all the way up to here till it get refracted and bent here if suppose see in this case also what we'll see generally we'll see the final image over, over here f, as a frame like a prime so the image will be formed actually at a prime but for our discussion purpose for our learning purpose we can think the effect of both separately and then combine them together later that means what we'll think that first the l1 lens is responsible for the refraction and image formation okay so if suppose the l2 lens were not there then what would have happened the oa ray after refraction it will directly go see this dotted line it would have gone up to f so i am just thinking that an image has been formed at f due to this refraction by l1 okay and 
see this if so the the path is actually a f path so o a is getting refracted by via this path a f okay so this is the refraction occurred from l1 lens now see this a f or a being this capital f being the principal focus of L1. Suppose we are just thinking that since the light is parallel light is actually getting converged at F, so capital F is principal focus. That is F1. Okay, F1 of L1 lens. Okay, see what I'm saying you that. You suppose this L2 lens is not there at that situation after refraction light is actually meeting the principal axis over here at F. That means parallel rays are getting converged at F. That's that's why I'm just taking that F is the or I can write C1F is F1. That means the principal focal length. Or this is called second principal focal length. Second principal focal length because it is near the image or image is formed at that point okay but the focal length whether it is second or first principal focal length they are same in length same in length but they will be on either side of the center of curvature or center of the optical center of the lens all right i should not say optical uh, i should not say center of curvature because center of curvature for this lens will be somewhere else this is called optical center okay so the focal principal foci for the first or second they will be on either side of the lens okay so since the right ray oa which is parallel to the principal axis is getting refracted and after refraction it is meeting at point f on the principal axis so i can think that f is a f is principal focus of the lens l1 so that is what i have thought now look up upon refraction light is getting deviated i'll see what is the deviation the deviation produced by lens l1 how much is the deviation see deviation see light ray would have gone through this way gone through this way okay but it is getting deviated it is coming af af this way so this is delta 1 that is the deviation so let us write deviation produced by l1 okay so this is what we can find out we will calculate this okay i'll just write I'll just erase this portion. I hope you have understood this part. Okay, so look in this case also you have to think that this F will act as virtual image for this lens B, sorry, lens L2, which will finally will create the final image at a prime upon refraction and see in this case if we want to find out what is the deviation see this this is the ray going suppose here so it would have gone like this somewhere here okay so you can just think this thing see this this is the final ray it would have gone like this but now it is getting bent so this will give you the final deviation okay or the deviation created by the second one you will get from here so see after refraction it is getting deviated after refraction at the second lens it is getting deviated rather than going through a f line it is going to a b and f prime b f prime okay a 
to B and then a prime it is here so the deviation is deviation created by deviation so delta 1 and this is deviation produced by lens L2 is delta 2 okay this is another deviation created by the lens 2 second lens now i'll just find out what is delta 1 i can find out delta 1 is equal to tan inverse it is since since delta these are very very small angle i can write 10 delta 1 is equal to nearly is equal to delta 1 so this i can write see this triangle you take this triangle because this is delta this angle also will be delta one sorry delta one okay so i can just i'm just writing from triangle a c one and f this triangle i'm writing so you can see that so tan delta one means perpendicular by base so perpendicular is h1 or a c1 that is h1 okay and divided by base is actually c1 f which is nothing but f1 similarly we can write delta 2 is equal to tan delta 2 this is nearly equal to tan delta 2 that is is equal to see i'll just take this triangle see i'm just writing from the triangle b c2 and f prime because this is delta this also will be delta sorry this is delta 2 so this also will be delta 2 because these are opposite angle so i can write from that particular triangle i'll just clean it and then write see i have to find out what is delta 2 that is my goal so i am just considering the triangle bc2 a prime so this angle angle b sorry c a prime or b a prime c2 that angle is delta 2 so i can write tan delta 2 which is nearly equal to delta 2 is equal to height height is h2 over base that is cf2 because finally the the ray is actually getting converged at cf prime then i can write this as the c2 a prime is the focal length of the second lens l2 this is what i can write so finally what we have got see delta 2 is equal to this one and delta 1 is equal to this one i'll just clean everything and I'll write see what i have got deviation produced by lens l1 is h1 by f1 delta 1 is equal to and the deviation produced by the second lens will be h2 by f2 so this is what we get and see in this case the final image is created by created at a prime a prime okay so i can take that if i just consider the combination of that okay the combination has a focal length f so that could be so c2 a prime would be that this is the equivalent or the combination like uh, focal length of the combination because because finally you will not see this image you will not see this image you will see the final image over here and that is the combined effect of both so i can consider that c2 f as f this is the focal length of the combination focal length of the combination If you don't understand, you can tell ask me, Deepa, if you have any question over here. Okay. So look here. Also, see ray was coming this way, but it is getting deviated. So if you just re trace it back, it will touch over here. The original ray, or original ray was which one? A to B C. This ray was actually original ray. Original path was this way. This way if the lenses were not there but it is actually meeting here it is actually coming here so what is the what is the deviation deviation is this angle okay so which we are 
writing as delta this is the total deviation created by total deviation created by the combination deviation it is actually deviation produced by the combination the combination of the lens okay so what i can write from here since this combination this delta is produced by the combination if i know the individual deviation uh, like individual deviation created like deviations created by individual that i can write this total deviation is equal to delta 1 plus delta 2 this i can write so i can write that one okay now look if i have a species i have a space over here so i'll just do this here what i i had delta is equal to delta 1 plus delta 2 so total deviation created by the combination is equal to the deviation produced by individual lenses and delta 1 is equal to h1 by f1 and delta 2 is equal to h2 by f2 that we have already found out we have already found out so look here i can just write it see from this particular figure i'll just clean this one see delta i can write delta is equal to tan delta nearly is equal to tan delta that is equal to see i can take this triangle see i have this angle delta so this will be equivalent to this one this this angle okay this angle so i can write this as h2 by yeah so we can no sorry this can be actually the this one yeah this one this triangle i can just write write this triangle cd sorry dc and f prime this triangle i can take and then write so the cd so it will be actually D, dc over c prime c f prime that means delta will be is equal to cd is nothing but h1 by c prime c f prime i have taken the focal length of the combination f so i can just put it here sorry this will be h1 h1 I'm just taking this triangle, this triangle, this triangle over here, because this angle is delta, so this is opposite angle. This also will be delta. So from there, I have written here. Okay, you can just verify it. Okay, from the triangle DCA prime, I'm writing H1 over F is equal to delta. So I can just put it here H over h1 over f is equal to h1 over f1 plus h2 over f2 now look i i can just make some simplification if i have h1 over here also but here it is actually h2 so we can just eliminate h2 from some relationship let us see let us take the triangle triangle a c1 f the ac1 f this big triangle this triangle okay if you take that triangle and you take this triangle again this small triangle the bc2 f this two triangle okay you can understand that so i am taking a c1 f triangle and b c2 f triangle so these two triangles are actually similar triangle if you just look properly this one one triangle and another one is a c1 and f these are two similar triangles because see they have two angles equal this angle common okay so you can just make them similar triangle if i 
have these two similar triangle then I can write C A C one over C one F I can write that is equal to I can write B C two over C two F F I can write this because these two triangles are similar triangle using the principle of similarity so I I can write AC1 which is equal to H1 over C1 F which is nothing but F1 that is equal to BC2 so which is nothing but H2 over C2F which is the C2F we have to write what is C2F so this C2F is equal to I can write C2F yeah C2F this part so this part I can write see I can write this as F minus D so this part is D and this whole thing is F okay just so if we just subtract that D then we get what is C2F okay so C2F is equal to F minus D so as a whole what I can write look you might be surprising little bit why I'm doing so much because I have to find out the relation between H1 and H2 that is what I'm doing now this is equal to H2 over F1 minus D look now you might be understanding my motivation see what I was doing so H2 will be F1 minus D over F1 into H1. I'll just put it here. Okay, let me put here. And then we'll get a nice relationship between F1, F2, etc. I'll just put it here in place of H2. What I'll write, see, I'll write F1 minus D over F1 here and H1 here. Look, I'll clean everything now. This thing, I'll clean. And what is the final solution or final conclusion from here? Look, I can write, see H1, I can, okay, let me just write little elaborate. One by H1 by F is equal to H1 by F1. Okay, then I can write plus h1 by f2 look from here so this is f1 f2 you, you can just take this h1 f1 by f1 f2 so f1 will get cancelled minus d into h1 by f1 f2 okay now h1 you just cancel from everything so you'll get this okay so look this thing this is the final expression if you have two lenses having focal lens f1 and f2 respectively and if you keep them d distance apart which i have shown here d distance apart then see how you get the equivalent focal length f is equal to 1 over f is equal to 1 over f1 plus 1 over f2 if you can keep, keep them in contact this is the formula if you keep them apart then another point will come here one another term this is this one okay so minus of d over f1 into f2 so if i just write in terms of power see this is the power of combination is equal to power of the individual this and this will be yes this will be P1, P2 into D. Okay. So this will be this will be subtracted from this two. So you can see that if, if you want slightly lesser power, you can just keep them little apart. So that this much will be subtracted from this addition. Okay. P1 plus P2. Then in that case you will get 
just slightly lesser than p1 plus p2 okay so this is combination of lenses separated by distance this i have derived here rigorously to make you understand see this will this will help you to understand the magnification of various instruments like microscope and then telescope etc which i will take little while okay so this is all for today deepa if you have any question you can ask me now so today we have discussed combination of thin lenses one was like case one was combination of thin lenses in contact and the second one was combination of thin lenses separated by a distance so do you understand the derivations and will you be able to remember the formulas and do numerical problems from here so do you understand how power get com combined power power like individual power of individual lenses gets com combined here right so power will be simply additive in the second case a term will be subtracted that is d by d into p1 p2 okay so this term will be subtracted otherwise if you see i think yeah i'll just show you in the previous case when you keep it in contact it, it in contact then the power will be simply additive so power of the combination will be p1 plus p2 plus 3 P, uh, p3 etc whatever number you want to take just power will be additive and magnification of this combination when you keep in contact so e each lens will give some magnification and thereby you will get see the, all the magnification will be multiplied to each other okay so if you don't have any doubt or question i'll just stop it here So yeah bye for today